What's up, guys? Iceman here. Welcome to Diablo 4. Appreciate you guys for coming by. Like this video if you will. Subscribe to the page. And swap that bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And blessings to my patrons. Links in the description below. So I love Diablo 4. Let me repeat myself. I love Diablo 4. It's been a spiritual journey so far. I went to Blizzard Sorcerer now from Meteor Sorcerer. My last video I was showcasing the Meteor Sorcerer and it was a pretty good time, but I just missed having ice surrounding me. Little ice shards just blasting up all over the place, just piercing the shit out of my enemies. So basically I respect, but what I did before that is a great strategy on how to get an alternative character, good 9 to 5 gear, before they're that high of a level, because this character right now is only level 72, Pepe, this sorcerer. So the problem is, all the gear I'm finding is pretty much junk. It's not the top tier 9 to 5 stuff, so I just keep cycling past it, and it's annoying. So what I did is I used my Necromancer, and I did a few Greed Shrine Nightmare Dungeons, level 26 and higher, I believe is what you need, and all the goblins in level 26 and higher Nightmare Dungeon will drop bags that have 9 to 5 gear in them. And the thing is, you can give those bags to your lower level character who can then open them up and they should be able to use those items. Because as long as they're level 55 or higher, the character, the items should be 55 or higher. So let's see what I get in these little sacks. I have one legendary sack and eight non-legendary sacks. So let's just open up all these little suckers. Oh, look at this. Oh my God. There is a two greater affix staff and holy shit. Gloves with a greater affix, a wand, unique, ancestral. Is that the one I've been looking for? I've actually been looking for Oculus because I just want to experiment with a build where she can just teleport all over the place. It has like plus 10 to teleport, up to plus 10. And it gives you the free enchantment for teleporters. Just Oculus, I think, would be a great time to mess around with. So before I open up that legendary cache, let's take a look at this gear. It looks like, what is that unique, by the way? Oh my god. Oh, it is an Oculus. And it is a 925. Oh, it only gives plus five to teleport this one out of ten. One maximum. So it's a it's a pretty low rolled Oculus. Attacks reduce evades cooldown by 0.6 seconds, and evade uh, evade is now teleport basically because it gives you the free uh, teleport enchantment. So yeah, we definitely have to try that out. So I'm gonna put that uh, over there for a minute. I'm gonna favorite that thing. There's that cash. And here's a helm that I'm sure I could use over the one that I currently have, because my current helm is the, um, oh, this is an offhand. Yeah, so I might want to consider keeping that as well. This is all 9 to 5 gear here. In fact, I'm going to keep all this stuff. Let me showcase my build. But first off, let's just look at the uh, the two items that uh, have greater affixes, so the two or three. So here's the staff, one of them that has one greater affix. And that affix is life, 2600 life. And then the second one has, oh my god, mana on kill and vulnerable damage, which is actually really good for uh, a blizzard sorcerer. Okay, so here's the legendary bag. Gloves again, unique gloves and a unique ring. Are you kidding me? Frostburn gloves. Up to a 25% chance to freeze enemies for two seconds. Freeze duration increased. Uh, interesting. This might be an all right glove, actually, to try out on this type of character, on a cold character. So then we have a ring, Mother's Embrace. If a core skill hits four or more enemies... I'm not using any core skills on this character, so that's not going to be of much help. But I'm still <coughs> going to keep it anyway. So let me showcase my build. All right, so here I am in a hell tide right now, and it's only a 75 plus area because my character's level 72. And check this out, I do cast a random blizzard. Well, it's not random, it's every 15 seconds. 
because I just now applied the blizzard enchantment where every 15 seconds a blizzard forms around you and follows you for 15 seconds. So I actually like that part. Check it out. It follows you around. And unlike the ones that you cast, there's the one that I cast and it does not, so the enchantment one does. Uh, basically, I wanted a cold sorcerer. I just missed the whole safety aspect that you get, that you get as a cold sorcerer. Just you're freezing things, you're chilling things all over the freaking place. You just feel like a god, basically. And the fire build was a bit too vulnerable for my taste, although I will explore it again later. And she's even still wearing the fire helm, so the helm is basically a completely wasted slot right now. Uh, but even with that being said, uh, the build does quite well. So... First off, let's put on this wand, the Oculus wand, where it gives the damage, the evade charge. Uh, there's no socket in it, but it gives plus five to teleport. So now teleport has a 7.34 second cooldown as opposed to a 9.3 second cooldown. So quite a change there. And I think I could put even more points into teleport, maybe even max it out. And uh, it gives a little bit of damage, gain the effect of the teleport enchantment for free. When you evade using teleport enchantment, you are taken to a random location. Really? I don't know how much I like that. So there's the evade. Let's try it again uh, when it cools down. And how... Okay, so basically you want boots that give three charges to evade. So that is a random... Yeah, I don't really like that, actually. Uh, it's kind of annoying. It's just like the Diablo 2 Oculus, where it's just annoying where it casts you. But nonetheless... I might still keep it, because uh, for safety reasons, it, it, it could still come in handy, the whole uh, random evade. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But with this build, I teleport around. I suck enemies into myself. Well, she does anyway. She suckles them into herself uh, because of this nice armor here, which I need to find a 925 uh, version of, the Raiment of the Infinite, where after using teleport, close enemies are pulled to you and stunned for 2.6 seconds. But teleport's cooldown is increased by 20%. So it's, uh, it has a detrimental effect there, but I, I kind of like it overall. Just how it's, uh, it pulls everything in so you can kill it more effectively uh, with teleport, basically. So, And then I also have the deep freeze right here. And this is nice because it resets all of my cooldowns, which is just amazing. Um, so I'm not doing that much damage right now. Oh! That's right, because I'm missing the most important aspect on this build, which was on my weapon. So let's put that weapon back on. Uh, and it has that imprint, the legendary aspect. When you cast Blizzard, it will periodically spawn exploding ice spikes that deal 2100 damage. Your ice spikes deal 15% increased damage to frozen enemies. So that's really, really important. Uh, that's kind of what this build is centered around. I actually just found this unique ring as well where damaging an enemy has up to a 30% chance to form an exploding ice spike, dealing 2300 cold damage. So, I'm just forming these ice spikes all over the place, and I need to enchant my gear because she still is wearing her fire mastery, or pyro mastery, or whatever, gear. So what I need to do is imprint um, the temperaments that give bonuses to ice spike damage, basically. And my blizzard should be casting ice spikes, or it uh, does those little, you can see the little pops around that it's doing. Those are the ice spikes, to my understanding. Pretty one exploding ice spikes. Yeah, those, those are the exploding ones. So, okay, so here now is the build without just the Oculus. And uh, the better version of it, because I have the imprint, which I probably have to put on my amulet or something to test it out a bit more thoroughly. And uh, I will be making videos on that. But yeah, this build has been pretty interesting so far, and this might be what I try for the next season. I might try this uh, season five, just because of the fact that it's uh, it's a lot more defensive, and cold skills are just... I always liked cold ever since Diablo 2. Cold Sorceress in Diablo 2 is probably the, uh, the most ideal one, aside from maybe a Lightning Nova or something like that. Uh, with a uh, super endgame gear, but cold is great for just farming, running general bosses, uh, collecting the goodies, and Blizzard was in fact a, a great skill for early Sorceress builds. And of course here in Diablo 4 it's not much different, where you can use it for uh, early, mid, to end game even. But that's the build. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking... I'm quite pleased with it so far. There's a lot of gears that I need to change out. So there's a legendary aspects that I have. It's basically the uh, convection of elements from Diablo 3. And here's the whole armor thing where you gain armor as you get hit because my armor really sucks right now. My boots have two greater affixes on them and they have the teleport imprint, which is really important. 
Uh, again, there's the weapon with the blizzard imprint, uh, the eye shards one, and here's my amulet, nothing special there, and wasted, wasted things all over the place. This thing, as you can see, has fire damage over time, and I'm not even using fire skills anymore. So yeah, I need to switch out all my gear, which is the reason why I wanted to farm those uh, treasure goblin bags. So I'm going to be looking over that gear and replacing some of that stuff on this character. You'll do 30%, 38% more damage to immobilized, stunned, or frozen enemies is the imprint that I have on that amulet. Uh, the ring, while deep freeze is active, exploding ice spikes again. See a, a synergy theme I have going on here with the ice spikes. Form in the area. Oop, it's about to beat my ass. So let's take care of this guy. And I have Frost Nova on the left click. Uh, I'm going to mess around with this build. I might actually put a basic skill on it just for the fun of it and get rid of Frost Nova for a little bit. Uh, but we'll see. While a deep freeze is active, exploding ice spikes form in the area dealing 2800 cold damage. Your ice spikes have a 50% decreased explosion radius. So there's that. And here's that unique rose ring that I showed you a little while ago with ice spikes as well. And then uh, this offhand. When you freeze an enemy, there's a 34% chance they become vulnerable for three seconds. And the whole ice spike thing is, is kind of interesting because I just uh, attained this glyph socket here that I need to level up where your ice spikes gain 20% critical strike chance, which is massive. So they're just going to be doing a ton of damage when I uh, temper this build correctly and uh, mess around with that glyph to level that thing up. I uh, get that secondary effect in action. Uh, I think this is going to be a good build. And I might mess around with this Oculus as well. I was not expecting to find that. I was actually going to target farm the, uh, the ice boss to get that Oculus because that's where you can find it if you target farm him. Um, but yeah, I might settle with this uh, basic 95 one so far. Cause, I mean, I was hoping for one with the greater affix, but whatever. Maybe I'll masterwork this thing a little bit and see how it goes. But stay tuned for more videos, and thanks again for coming by. Like this video if you will. Subscribe to the page. More to come. Peace be with you.